Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today is yet another jam packed episode where we will look specifically at what's happening with the food supply, how this will affect you directly. The second thing I want to look at is a new old crisis. What are we talking about? Well, you just have to stay tuned. I'll bring you all of that and more. Beginning right here, it's feeling like the 1970s again at gas pumps and grocery stores. Everybody in the comment section has been talking about the prices that they've been paying for gasoline or petrol, as well as all their grocery items. They'll say something like, I used to buy, you know, two bags worth of groceries and it was $40 and now it's $80. And these are real world ways to measure things. Because if you look at the CPI or the classic inflation measures that are provided by the government, it's never going to do it justice. It's just not going to happen. Even if we go back to the way it was calculated in 1990 or 1980, yes, we can get a more accurate indicator of what's happening. But ultimately, it really all depends on you, the person. And these type of things that we take for granted right now, you know, having cheaper food, that's not going to be the case going forward. So what's happening globally? Well, I'm going to show you why this is about to get a lot worse. And I'll tell you something if you stay until the end, what we can do to at least mitigate some of the increase. Food crisis grows as spiraling prices spark export bans. This is what I worry about, and that's why I wanted to put this up front. Because if you have a country out there who's delivering products to you, and you rely on that, and it's you know just happens. You as the individual, you don't necessarily have to call another country and say, hey, can you bring me some wheat? I need to make some pizza. No, that's kind of an automatic process. The companies are bringing it in and so on. Ends up on your store shelves, you buy it, it's all good. But what happens when that country says, we are not going to allow any more exports because we are dealing with our own issues? Then suddenly, as they say, it spirals out of control. Palm oil prices soar as Indonesia curbs exports. Ukraine bans wide range of agricultural exports. Serbia bans exports of wheat, corn, flour, and cooking oil. Yara curtails fertilizer output in Italy and France. It goes on and on. So, you know, you could say, well, you know, I just won't eat that product. I won't eat that product. Look, it's one after another after another. Pretty soon you're going to be going outside to the lawn and munching on the grass because that's all that's available. This isn't necessarily something that anybody wants to deal with and wants to live through, but that's where we're at today. I'll show you some of the charts that they, they talk about that in that particular article, but I'll show you charts in a second to make it visually easier for you to see what's happening. Food protectionism grows as Indonesia curbs palm oil exports. Companies will need to allocate 30% of exports for the home market. Protectionist moves will add pressure to global food inflation. Whatever products, I'll just say it now, these are the solutions, okay? I've talked about this many times before. Part of that, I'll just get into it one, one thing right now. If you are dealing with higher prices and you have the expectation of even higher prices in the future, what is the one thing that we can do? We can buy at today's prices so that we can essentially get a discount into the future. Everybody's worried about their seven shares of Amazon and instead they should be worrying about getting some foodstuffs, some basics, things that will store for a long period of time. Okay, now we can, you know, some people will say, I don't have enough money and so on. That's a whole different issue. But I think that people should be aware of this and taking action right now. Because I was talking about the six months ago, saying the food prices were rising and that they would continue to rise. Some were saying that actually they were, were going to go down in price significantly. Clearly that did not happen. Multiple factors here. Um, but, you know, why do we need to argue about this when we can see what's happening? We can see the direction it's going right now, as of this moment. Americans may have to say goodbye to steak and burgers as beef costs rise. So, of course, this is just uh, for those, you know, like I said, maybe you were eating beef and then the price is too high. Okay, I'm not going to eat beef anymore. I'm going to eat 
chicken. I'm going to eat, you know, whatever you, you change that, or I'm not going to eat that at all. I'm going to eat, you know, this vegetable or that vegetable, you know, you, you cut back. Eventually there's just nothing left. They printed, and I'll talk about this more in a separate video, but they printed literally trillions upon trillions of dollars globally. And the, you know, the end result for you and I has not been beneficial. Prices are all over the place. And what happens when prices go too high? There's something that I wrote on the, on the back of my second book. For those who have my book, Global Economic Collapse, at the back of the book, I wrote that there for a reason. And it says, soon the earth will rumble under the heels of the angry mobs. Iraqis protest rise in food prices. Russia and Ukraine are major producers of wheat and sunflower oil, goods heavily imported by Middle Eastern countries. America's electricity affordability and reliability crisis. Look at the cost increases that are being experienced now. Oh, don't worry, that's going to go down. It's just a temporary blip. Well, even if it's temporary, let's just call it a couple years. That hurts people down the road. It's not as if it's just going to hit somebody this year. I mean, come on, let's get real. 44 million, the number of U.S. Adult in, adults in households unable to pay an energy bill, bill in full last year. 44 million? That wasn't 2020 where there was a lot of you know, programs in place and so on. That's 2021. Oil prices rising. In fact, they did a flip, turned around. It, it was Brent crude's one biggest one day drop on record. Okay, Brent for Brent crude as well as WTI. This is WTI at the time of this recording. It's sitting around one hundred and ten dollars a barrel. So it was up to one hundred and thirty for a moment there. But wheat, on the other hand, which I've been talking about extensively here, has continued to rise. It's just going straight up. Take a look here. You could see wheat, uh, world shares of wheat exports, Russia, Ukraine, two very big exporters. Uh, also on the list, US, Canada, and a notable mention, France. You could see wheat, major exporters, and the position of Ukraine in 2020. Looking at this, number one, Russia, number two, EU, three usa number four canada and you can just see the breakdown looking at all of these the, who's importing ukrainian food products right here egypt indonesia bangladesh pakistan and so on so you look at the ripple effect and if these countries suddenly can't get ukrainian food products they gotta immediately what happens is you start to see the supply shortages and the stores can't have it, the markets don't have what they need. But then you have to seek out other suppliers. Those other suppliers are going to obviously have more demand, prices rise. Russia and Ukraine account for 28% of the world wheat exports in March. So that's significant. You can compare it to the other countries, but we know that what we know what this is going to do. China is most dependent on Ukrainian corn. And you could look at the breakdown there, as well as emerging market consumers are dependent on Russian wheat. So this is going to create, and it's already begun, the Arab Spring 2.0, which I would say on a global scale, it's going to be, you know, I don't know what, the food crisis. It's going to be a food crisis. This is just showing us what's happening here with the Bloomberg Commodity Spot Index. For the most part, all commodities are rising considerably. And this chart goes back to the 1970s. We've never seen a weekly change like that before. What we just went through. Yeah, people are saying, ah, whatever. That was the biggest spike that we've ever seen. And of course, with that, European natural gas, as well as European fertilizer prices have risen considerably, putting additional pressure on people. And now I want to cover a few aspects of this before we close off the video. A lot of details here, okay? Stick with me. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It's always appreciated. 
BlackRock hedge fund raised its Russia bet, suffered record losses. Emerging Frontiers Fund lost a tenth of its value in February. Fund increased its large wager on Russian stocks during the month. They thought that this would be the time to buy the dip, and they got crushed. Always remember where we are in the cycle. Very, very important. China, always key to mention, basically what they're saying is that they now officially condemn the sanctions. This is really key to understand because the alliance between Russia and China as well as, you know, what's going to happen with the world order here in the near future, pay close attention. So you saw what was happening right now with Ukraine applying to join the EU. Well, now Georgia and Moldova are doing the same. These two countries bordering along with Russia, clearly you see the, you know, the desire to say, oh, we want to partner with these guys. So they're going in that direction right now. Whether or not they're going to actually get approved, we will see. Will Russian bonds default? There's debate about that. And you can read the whole article out of Bloomberg if you're interested. But what I want to make note here is essentially that what's happening in Russia right now. They're saying, okay, we can pay back our debt, but you've sanctioned our country. And so we can't pay back in dollars we could pay back in rubles. The trouble is that at the time of this um, video, Russian ruble is 137 to the US dollars. And the potential here is that it's actually going to decline a little bit more, potentially much more. So they say, well, I don't want your rubles. I want US dollars. Others are starting to say that, hey, they're going to pay back in gold. I really don't know about that. I've seen no evidence to support that. But we will see. I would be interested. I'd be interested to see that. That would be that would be wild. And of course, what happens through all of this? Rising prices, rising prices everywhere. Well, you see this. Almost 1,000 people are now living in Phoenix's exploding tent city. Poverty will increase. Crime will increase. They're starting to now in, in different places. If the crime, you know, they have some theft from a store, if it's less than $900, they don't even prosecute them. So you, you see the repeated offenses. People just go in and, okay, I'll take $900 worth, $900 worth, reducing the incentive to actually, you know, to, to not do it in some places. I mean, San Francisco is being one example. And this is just talking about the Federal Reserve. So imagine all of what you see right now, huge inflation, still a lot of concern. By the way, war generally creates more inflation. And then we have the Federal Reserve uh, having to step up their game right now. Some are saying that, oh no, all of this means they're not going to be able to do what they intended. As of right now, there is no more addition to the balance sheet. Okay, they ended off just shy of $9 trillion. There's no more addition to the balance sheet. If you want to confirm this for yourself, by next week, you'll be able to do so. If you type in Fed H41, you will see it for yourself and you could compare it to the previous week. So I would say to people right now, real quick, what I talked about before as solutions by now, uh, you know, so you don't have to worry about the prices later. At the same time, I would highly, highly recommend people to, number one, have their own garden. Oh, you can't do that. You live in a cold climate. Check out One Yard Revolution. He's in Chicago, grows year round. Uh, you also, and by the way, like literally snow on top of his homemade greenhouse or hoop house. Okay, that's one thing. And of course, you can always look into buying in bulk. You can always do this. Massive quantities of you know, storable food. You can get that today. You can solidify your position right now. Dig your heels in and hopefully we can get over this hump. There's so much more. I've got a playlist called How To and Solutions for you to check out. If you appreciate this message, hit that thumbs up button. I hope you do. Uh, you know, I'm trying to bring you relevant brand, like right hot off the presses information and hopefully connect that in with, you know, solutions when I can. I do repeat myself in that regard, but, you know, there's always new people all the time. If you're not subscribed already, you've got to do so. Come on. We've got over 280,000 people here and hopefully more will come by. Hit that thumbs up. I'll see you on the next one.